Good morning, folks. We've got a number of things to cover today, starting with another stray, bright, active region that can't seem to form sunspots beneath its bright umbral magnetic fields. Let's come over to spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star was quiet. Small coronal holes morph around the active region, but otherwise we have a calmer day on the sun, and the solar wind is calm as well. When even the cosmic ray error readings aren't getting into scary range, you know we've got calm geospace conditions. Quick earthquake note before moving forward. We expect three magnitude 6 earthquakes on the planet each week. It's been eight days since the last one. We expect a magnitude 7 earthquake around every 20 days or so. It's been 83, more than four times the average waiting period for the next one. Eyes on seismicity and the forecasting tools provided at QuakeWatch.net. Folks, we had a surprise hailstorm run people off the roadways in Pakistan. It was not forecasted nor seen developing. Also have flash flooding in the UAE, taking out roadways and inundating towns. But I want to focus right now on the U.S. forecast. For example, look at Thursday's change coming to Colorado Springs. From the daily high to the next night low is nearly a 60 degree drop, and it's going to be driven by two complementary upper level patterns. First, the jet stream dip is going to deepen, and do so right down over the Rockies. But also, as the polar vortex gears up from nothing, it passes by the level where we'd call it a polar vortex event. It's happening at the same time, in the same place, on its way to full strength this northern winter. So folks, imagine waking up to this each morning. Probably puts a different spin on your day. Now imagine you have to wake up to three of them. Interesting new study has revealed a triple red star system, and one of them has a repeating transient, indicating at least one planet is orbiting in that red triple system. While it's worth noting, any time a professor shreds the usefulness of a common physics classroom teaching, this paper is in your link list today too, by the way, it is always far more interesting when a similar tone is taken on a topic as important as super flares or micronova. They describe the angular momentum transport modeling as inaccurate at best, and describe a number of other existing outstanding questions as embarrassing for the state of the science. Might want to get those both locked down so we could see them coming. You might recall a couple of days ago, we poked a bit of fun at MIT's fuzzy dark matter story while I found their paper, and it appears they roped in Princeton, Harvard, and some others on this one too. Team effort there investigating their imaginations. The big cosmic story this weekend was the confirmation that our galaxy has had at least one superwave in the past. They call it a Seifert flare. Essentially, it represents a galactic core outburst, and they're not only able to see the aftermath of the last one in the Milky Way, but they're able to trace its effects on the large Magellanic Cloud. Now, where we all have to take the science with a grain of salt is the timeline. They say this was likely between 2 and 8 million years ago. Not exactly exact. But this is a guess, still, based on other guesses like distance to the center, distance of the outburst, the temperature and velocity of the burst cloud remnants, etc. Let's just say, we hope to never see one again. Especially because, as I mentioned, we need to keep an eye on the sun as well, provides us all we can handle. There is no doubt that the sun can super flare every few thousand years, and the evidence that it is a long period recurrent nova is mounting by the month. It's one of the most important topics we can investigate as our ancestors complement the natural evidence in blaming the sun as the destroyer. We greatly appreciate your support. Website members, your Fly on the Wall podcast yesterday was very fun and very out there compared to our normal topics. We have our three films linked below the video in the description box if you are new here and need to catch up. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.